Hello. This is a continuation of my summary of Alistair Parker's uh, short introduction to the Second World War, this one dealing with the Manhattan Project. It comes from his chapter 14, The Defeat of Japan and the Atom Bomb. Perhaps in another video I'll talk about the development of nuclear research during the interwar period. But it's enough to say for the moment that in 1939, scientists in several countries, uh, the United States, Britain, Germany, France, alerted uh, governments to the theoretical possibility of atomic explosions and the decisive advantage uh, that they would provide uh, to any uh, nations which possessed the necessary uh, technology. This led the British Air Ministry uh, to order one tonne of uranium oxide in May 1939, and for the German Ministry of Economics and the French Ministry of Armaments to become interested in nuclear research. The French were interested in the possibilities of controlled chain reactions using uranium with heavy water as a moderator to slow down the neutrons, and began work on the isolation of plutonium, a new fissionable element. If you know as little about uh, atomic energy as I do, then I will note that heavy water has a heavier hydrogen isotope than ordinary water. Isotopes are atoms which have the same atomic number, that is the number of protons in their nuclei, but differ in the number of neutrons in their nuclei. Early in 1940, a member of the French Secret Service bought the entire world stock of heavy water and it was transferred to Britain in August. Most of the French atom team came to Cambridge when France fell. Simultaneously, two American physicists published an account of the process. We should note that there was no secret behind the atom bomb. The basic theoretical principles were public and the only problem was that of exploiting atomic energy in terms of the application of that process. To make an atomic weapon required an isolation of enough uranium-235 for a critical mass, that is, an amount of sufficient volume and density to prevent too high a proportion of free neutrons from dispersing their energy without being captured by further nuclei and causing them to split. Piles are needed to generate controlled chain reactions to transmute, transmute uranium-238 into plutonium, which is a fissile element. These operations needed the development of whole new industries operating completely novel equipment. Initially, political leaders and their scientific advisors didn't think that atomic energy would be relevant to World War II. But as a defensive precaution, they should carefully observe the enemy's progress. In March 1940, however, Otto Frisch and Rudolf Peels, both refugees from the Nazis living in Britain, wrote a memorandum which was communicated to a government-appointed science committee. This set out how and why an atom bomb could be constructed and outlined its lethal effects from explosion and radiation. This led to the formation of the Maud Committee in April 1940, which in July reported that a uranium bomb was practical and likely to lead to decisive results in the war. Given that the possibility of nuclear energy was open knowledge, speed was essential, although many of the best German scientists had already fled the Nazi regime and others were about to be murdered. Germany still possessed capable physicists some of them eager to use their skills for a Nazi victory. A factory would be needed to produce the required materials for the first bomb, and it was anticipated that these could be ready by the end of 1943. In the United States, several influential scientists, including Vannevar Bush, the head of the Office of Scientific Research and Development, with access to the President, had received draft copies of the Moore Committee's report. They suggested a joint Anglo-American study of uranium 
the proposal was reinforced by Roosevelt directly to Churchill. Perhaps eager to have independent British research as well as production post-war, the British rejected this proposal, feebly complaining that American security might be inadequate, ironic in retrospect, given the later treachery by Dr. Klaus Fuchs. This is uh, Vannevar Bush, a director of the American Office of Scientific Research and Development from 1941 through to 1947, and a key figure in various key uh, scientific uh, developments and breakthroughs during this period. By the summer of 1942, American entry into the war had removed all constraints on possible collaboration with the British and the British had discovered that any nuclear production plant would have to be on such a massive scale that it wouldn't be possible until after the war. Uh, a similar constraint probably in also inhibited the Germans. Therefore, the British now approached the Americans, but found that the Americans were now uninterested, despite amiable expressions of willingness from Roosevelt. The flow of information had dried up. By now, the Americans had caught up with the British almost completely in terms of theory and were well ahead of them in experiment and production. Both sides were wary. The Americans feared that the British would exploit American nuclear prowess for their own post-war commercial advantage. The British feared a future in which they would be dependent on the United States, whilst other nations such as the Soviet Union forged ahead with their own programs. But Bush and others in America saw the advantages of cooperation with the British and the refugee European scientists in their orbit, whose work might save weeks of valuable time in the practical realization of the project. The impasse was resolved when the British renounced using nuclear know-how for commercial gain. And in August 1943, at the first Quebec conference, Roosevelt and Churchill signed a formal cooperation agreement for limited cooperation. On the 18th of September 1944, the two leaders came to further agreement, whereby the Americans accepted that in Britain's reduced economic circumstances, the British would need to develop nuclear energy in the post-war period, and that commercial exploitation was therefore acceptable. An agreement ignored by Roosevelt's successor, Truman, they also agreed not to share knowledge of their work with the Soviets, albeit that scientists involved with the Manhattan Project to develop the bomb opposed this secrecy, arguing that Soviet participation would make it easier to devise a scheme for international control and inspection of nuclear weapons. We may note in passing that Major General Leslie Groves, the military director of the Manhattan Project, feared that British-sponsored scientists might be security risks. So thank you very much for listening, and particular thanks to my patrons for their kind support and encouragement. Without them, I wouldn't be able to make these videos. You're very welcome to support my channel if you wish. Please do like, comment and share on the videos. It really does help. Subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. Patreon and PayPal links below for those of you who want to provide practical support. Next week, we'll flat finish this chapter uh, with a video on the bomb and the Japanese surrender. Have a good day.